Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, I'm going to be testing out Botocera 5.27 on the Odroid N2+. Plus. This board is one of my favorite ARM-based single board computers of 2020, and for good reason, because this thing is an absolute powerhouse, especially when it comes to emulation with Android, or a standalone retro emulation operating system like Botocera here. And with the latest version of Botocera, which as of making this video is 5.27, they have added the ability to overclock the N2+, Plus up to 2.4 gigahertz. And from what I've tested so far and the performance I'm seeing, this is actually turning out to be one of the best ARM-based single board computers for emulation, at least in 2020. And before anybody asks, yes, the N2 Plus is more powerful than the Raspberry Pi 4, but you gotta keep in mind, the Raspberry Pi community is absolutely huge, and it's staggering when you compare it to the Odroid community. Now, don't get me wrong, the Odroid community is big and it's rapidly growing, but there's still way more development going on for the Raspberry Pi series rather than Odroid, but we still have some really great stuff over here. Real quick, I just wanted to go over the basic specs here to get you up to speed. For the CPU, we have the Amlogic S922X. 4 A73 cores up to 2.4 GHz, 2 A53 cores up to 2 GHz. Hard Kernel offers two different models. We have one with 2 GB of RAM, one with 4. They both have HDMI 2.0, 4 USB 3.0 ports. It supports micro SD card or their eMMC module. And the prices range from $63 for the 2 GB model up to $79. So with that out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and plug this into my game capture so we can get a better look at the screen. I'm just going to show you some of the new features with Botocera, then we'll jump right into some emulation testing. So before we get into testing, I wanted to go over a few things with the Odroid N2 Plus and this new version of Botocera. The Odroid N2 Plus does have the ability to overclock up to 2.4 gigahertz. And if we go to system settings here, overclock. As you can see, we're set to extreme, so it does have the overclocking feature built into Botocera now for the Odroid N2+. As for the theme, this is the stock theme, Carbon, but there's tons that you can download through the download section, updates and downloads, themes, and I've got a few of these installed. I mean, there's some really good stuff in here. Another feature that we have is the content downloader. So if you're running Botocera on the Odroid XU4 with the OGST screen, you can download all of the packages you need right here. Quake game files, bezels with CRT effect, and there's some games here that you can download. These are freeware games for certain systems. Let's go to UI settings, theme set, and we'll just go through a couple of these. And you can change all of the settings here. So if you want it to fade out or instant, which I usually have it set on, transition style, game launch transition. You can set all this up through here. There's a couple really good ones in here. Uh, Next Level Remix Retrofix. This is one of my favorites right now. It looks absolutely amazing and it runs great on the Odroid N2+. Plus. So yeah, we do have customization here. We'll just go with one more uh, video game. And like I said, if you don't like the instant transition in the background here, you can always set it up to fade or whatever you like. So I'm going to be going with the Retrofix theme here. It just looks really clean. It's very minimal. Um, through here, I was able to download all of my artwork and videos. As you can see, it's playing the video in the background. Really depends on what theme you have installed. It'll play it in the foreground if you want it to. Dreamcast. Got everything downloaded. Internal scraper is working and you can scrape videos from here if you're using screen scraper. So it's got a lot of great features built in, but let's see how it really performs on the Odroid N2 with that 2.4 gigahertz overclock. First up, let's do some Sega Saturn. Let's go with Sega Rally, then we'll test Panzer Dragoon. As you can see, we have system bezels on each side. And if you're really not into this, you can disable it from the bottom Sarah settings. All right, so Sega Saturn on the Odroid N2 Plus with that overclock performs absolutely amazing. We're using the Yoba Sanshiro core inside of RetroArch. And as you can see, this is Sega Rally. I also have the FPS listed up in the top right hand corner, and you'll see this with every game I test in this video. I'm very impressed with the performance here, and it's been a while since I've seen a single board computer run Yoba Sanshiro at full speed. I got one more to test here with Sega Saturn, then we'll move over to another system.
I also wanted to throw at least one PS1 game in here because I know I'll have somebody asking, and yes, this will run PS1 at full speed. Next up, we have some Dreamcast emulation. We're using the Flycast core inside of RetroArch, Marvel vs. Capcom 2. We're at full speed. I've set this to NTSC, so we can get that 60 FPS out of it. And as you can see, the N2 Plus is actually handling it quite well. Now, in the past, with this single board computer, I've tested Redream and Android, and personally, I prefer running Dreamcast like that, but to see Flycast running this well on the N2 Plus is really amazing. So here we have some N64 emulation, and I'm using the auto setting inside of Botocera. The game here is Gauntlet Legends, it's running great, but as you can see we have that white border going on. And if you notice, down in the bottom left hand corner, our character status is kind of blacked out. Now I'm sure I could have fixed this by going with a different core, but I kind of wanted to see how auto worked, and the game is running at full speed, we just have some visual glitches going on. But for everything else that I tested, auto worked great. Here we have Diddy Kong Racing, running at 60 FPS. I personally had really good luck with N64 emulation on the N2 Plus, either using Android or Botocera here. Moving up to PSP using the standalone version of PPSSPP, Soul Calibur Broken Destiny, 3x resolution. Had really good luck with the N2 Plus and PSP emulation, now there are some harder to run games like Killzone and Chains of Olympus that are going to struggle on this even at 1x, but for a majority of the games that are compatible with PPSSPP, this little board will handle them at 2 to 3x resolution. Ratchet and Clank for PSP, only thing I had to do here was drop it down to 2x and it runs great. At 3x it was struggling just a bit, around 28-27 FPS. Finally for PSP we have Chains of Olympus. I have all the hacks on that I can do with this game. 1x resolution, and we're still struggling. This is just one of those games that's hard to run on these ARM single board computers. Now this is with no frame skip, so I'm going to go into the settings and turn frame skip on. And with frame skip on, at 1x resolution, it's pretty playable. Now keep in mind it does cut the frame rate in half, so we're running this at 30, but that's the way we have to do it with this game. And the last thing I wanted to test here was GameCube with an easier to emulate game, which is Wind Waker. We're using Dolphin, it is built into Botocera for the Odroid N2 Plus, and even with the overclock and this easier to run game, we're not at full speed. I've done a dedicated video on the Odroid N2 and Dolphin emulation in the past, and I mentioned that it'll probably never run these games at full speed, and a year later, we're still not hitting it up. So yeah, the Odroid N2 Plus does an amazing job with emulation using Bado Sierra, but to tell you the truth, I've actually had better performance with Android and emulation on this board. Especially in certain emulators like Dreamcast, because I have the ability to swap over to Redream from the Google Play Store, and it just performs really well on this board. But either way you look at it, this is one of the best performing ARM-based single board computers for emulation that's on the market right now, and I'm not counting the $500 Snapdragon boards that you can get from certain development sites. We're talking about an easily accessible $63 to $79 single board computer that you can pick up on Amazon. But that's pretty much it for this video. Really appreciate you watching. If there's anything else you want to see running on the Odroid N2 Plus, just let me know in the comments below. And I'd also like to know what you think about the performance like it sits right now with the latest version of Bado Sarah. I think it's a great performer. But like always, thanks for watching.